Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So a new study out of the University of Southern California has shown how exercise can induce a specific peptide that's used to regulate our aging process. Things such as reduction in our gait and the length of our stride. Well, that's enough waffling off me. Let's jump into the presentation and see what this new study out of the University of Southern California has got to offer with regard to the aging process. This is a review of a piece I read in the Medical Express written by Beth Newcomb, where she talks about a new study that shows humans express a powerful hormone during exercise and that treating mice with this hormone improves physical performance, capacity and fitness. The researchers say the findings present new possibilities for addressing age-related physical decline. The research, published in Nature Communications, reveals a detailed look at how the mitochondrial genome encodes instructions for regulating physical capacity, performance and metabolism during aging and may be able to increase our health span. An assistant professor at the University of Southern California and corresponding author of the study said, mitochondria are known as the cell's energy source, but they are also hubs that coordinate and fine tune metabolism and actively communicate to the rest of the body. As we age, that communication network seems to break down, but our study suggests that you can restore that network or rejuvenate an older mouse so it is as fit as a younger one. The study looked at the role of MOTSC, which is a mitochondrial peptide, one of several recently identified hormones known to mimic the effects of exercise. However, MOTSC is unique because it is encoded in a small genome of the mitochondria rather than the larger genome in a cell's nucleus. For this study, the research team tested how injections of MOTSC affected mice of different ages by measuring the physical capacity and performance in young, middle-aged and old mice. And they were two months, 12 months and 22 months respectively. When the mice were presented with physical challenges, including maintaining balance on a rotating rod and running on an accelerating treadmill, mice of all ages who had received the MOTSC treatment fared significantly better than the untreated mice of the same age. Even groups of mice that had been fed a high fat diet showed a marked physical improvement after the MOTSC treatment and less weight gain than the untreated mice. Additionally, treating the oldest mice nearing the end of their lives with MOTSC treatment resulted in marked physical improvements. This later life treatment improved grip strength, gait measured by the length of their stride and physical performance, which was assessed through a walking test. Unfortunately, running was not possible at this age. The older mice were the human equivalent of 65 years and over. And once treated, they doubled their running capacity on the treadmill. Professor Lee said they were even able to outrun their middle-aged untreated cohorts. To measure the effects of exercise on MOTSC levels in humans, the researchers collected skeletal muscle tissues and plasma from sedentary healthy male volunteers who exercised on a stationary bike. Samples were collected before, during and after the exercise, as well as following a four hour rest. In muscle cells, levels of MOTSC increased nearly 12 fold after the exercise and remained partially elevated after the four hour rest, while MOTSC levels in blood plasma also increased by approximately 50% during and after exercise and then returned to the baseline after the rest period. These findings suggest that the exercise itself induced the expression of the mitochondrial encoded regulatory peptides. The expression of MOTSC during exercise in humans and the results from these studies in mice lend support to the idea that aging is regulated 
by genes in both the mitochondrial and the nuclear genomes. While further research on MOTSC is needed, the data indicates that MOTSC treatment could increase health span and address frailty and other age-related conditions. Professor Lee went on to say, indicators of physical decline in humans, such as reduced stride length or walking capacity, are strongly linked to mortality and to morbidity. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. Uh, I've got a couple of observations and possibly a question for you to answer in the comments below. Um, all looks very interesting, but we don't know when it's going to be made available. As Professor Lee says, this is linked to extending health span and reducing things such as frailty and other age related conditions that increase morbidity and mortality. That said, when you look at the, the human results that just came from exercise, it looks like it's harking back to the, the use it or lose it. So I'm not talking about going to the gym, doing an hour's CrossFit every day and literally killing yourself to stay alive, but more on the David Sinclair side of getting breathless for 10 minutes every day or maybe 20 minutes every other day. Uh, I'd like to know what you think about this study and whether or not you would want to take a supplement or some kind of treatment that increases your output of MOTSC, or do you think you'd rather uh, achieve the, the um, results by doing physical activity? I think that at the moment, I'd be happy with the expression of this peptide by going to the gym every other day uh, and spending maybe 30 or 40 minutes at the gym, as opposed to taking some kind of treatment that will mimic this exercise. Um, well, that's it for today. I hope you found this um, interesting. Um, I look forward to your comments on this particular study in the comment section below. Um, as always, please take care and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.